Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things, and I'm going to go through here today, you know, how you relate the seven standards, which are distance, I guess these are SI standards, distance, or concepts, or whatever you want to call them, distance, mass, time, temperature, distance, mass, time, temperature, current, luminosity, and moles. How these relate to and how the units relate to are what I would call my 13 first stab at the drive units and those are specific gravity, angular displacement I'll write better in a second angular displacement distance obviously area volume mass force, worker energy, power, pressure, torque, density, and unit weight. Now there's a whole host of others which we'll continue with later like voltage and resistance and capacitance but knowing that these things and I'll put the metric units here can be each somehow related to distance is meters mass is kilograms time is seconds temperature is Kelvin current is amperes luminosity is candelas and moles is moles. I'm going to add to this two concepts that are in fact really standard in some way and what is angles or revolution. One revolution is just one revolution. You know when you've gone all the way back to the beginning. And there's one other here I think that's kind of implied uh, just by reality but these are our standards. So first off specific gravity. Um, and I'll try to do these, I guess, this way. Let's see if I can do it that way. Specific gravity is going to actually be unitless. Usually, what you think about it, and you're going to see later, is a density over a density of water. H2O, specific water at 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, angular displacement is going to be the basically the distance of the arc. over the distance of a radius. That's called a radian. So this is unitless, unitless. So I'll write that unit less and unit less because it's an arc over an arc. And basically very often we start talking about angular displacement is radians. Or as Salcon says, radius is is. is. Okay, distance is easy enough because we already have that that's right there. The distance is basically just meters or distance. All right, so typically meters. Area is going to be distance squared, or in our case, meters squared. Volume, you can basically get it, but I'm going to write it a little bit odder here is area times distance or distance cubed and the way you should memorize area is area times depth or height and this is meters cubed mass again it's one of our basics so a lot of these is going to be kilograms and of course this is kilograms so i'm going to go ahead and erase that because i'm trying to get the concepts here so edit cut 
this actually should be written then as typically mass, one of our seven standards. Force is where it starts to get interesting. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. And acceleration is distance over time squared. So force becomes mass times distance over time squared. F equals ma. Force is newtons. And F equals ma. And it's a vector. Now we'll go back here at some different points and start talking about what's a vector. Distance is a vector. Uh, and then the rest of these are vectors. All right, so work is the next. Work, I'm going to try to bring these down across now a little bit better. Okay, work is force times distance. So force times distance, and work is going to be expressed in watts. Right, and so force times distance is just going to be mass times distance squared. all over time squared. You can also see this if you think about it another way it will be mass times velocity squared because velocity is distance over time. And later on you're going to see it's actually can be these can be always be expressed in these different ways but let's think about this as force is mass times distance over time squared. Work is force times distance the dot product it's expressed in watts, and it, of course, then would be mass times distance squared over time squared. Power gets odd, doesn't it? Power, first off, this is wrong here. I apologize. That should be joules. So joules is mass times distance squared over time squared, force times distance. Power is watts. And it is work over time. So this is mass times distance squared all over time now cubed. And as I see these, very often they're not expressed this way, but this is in fact what they are, as you're building one upon the other. If you know what mass is, which is a definition, and force is mass times acceleration, distance over time squared, and work is mass is force times distance, you then get mass times distance squared over time squared. And if power is in fact work over time, you get this divided by time, which is time cubed. Obviously a good reason to learn how to deal with exponents as we tie this back to my pressure. My older daughter's favorite is Pascal's or Pascal's. And pressure can be expressed any number of ways, but probably the best when you're learning in chemistry is it's, it's work over volume. And so if you think about work as mass times distance squared over time squared, if you divide that by volume, you're going to have pressure being mass over time squared, which does not make sense, but you'll see that it's true. Let's check it again. If pressure is force over area and force is mass times distance, sorry, I did it wrong, where it's work over volume and not area. So mass times distance squared over time squared, when you put that over distance cubed, you get mass over time squared times distance. What you'll later on see is in fact that it should be the same if you work it out as force over area. You can kind of see that that's going to be the case. All right, torque is an interesting one. Torque is a force times a distance. It's got a different concept than the other thing that's force times distance. This is actually a cross product. Torque is literally just have units of Newton meters because it's, I don't know exactly why it doesn't have a special name, but it's Newton meters. And that, of course, would just be Newtons times meters or force times distance. 
So that would be mass times distance squared over time squared. Mass times distance squared over time squared. I'm cheating down here in the end to keep space. Density, of course, is going to be mass over volume. Back to an easy one. So mass. over distance cubed and unit weight as I finally finish this one out here is going to be weight over volume so weight if we remember was mass times acceleration so that's distance over time squared divided by volume so that's time or uh, distance cubed. So mass times distance over time squared is going to be mass over time squared times distance squared because one of the volumes is going to cancel. Now, when we clean this up, or better yet, when you clean it up, you can go We'll go back and prove to yourself basically that everything, at least so far, can be built from these standards. And you can see in these standards, we haven't even used moles, that'll come up pretty quickly. We haven't used luminosity, we haven't used current, we haven't even used temperature. We've used distance, mass, and time. And any time, and we're going to put the vector signal over this now, any time you have a distance, or a distance as a cross product with something, you're going to get a vector. So we're going to see later on the ones that are vectors here. That's a vector. Force is a vector. Torque in some ways is a vector. And you're going to see how things distance, uh, these things start to work out when you start learning the difference between a cross product and a dot product. So let's review here. We had our seven standards, distance, mass, time, temperature, current, luminosity, moles. And then we add revolution and one more, which I can't remember, in terms of an implied standard. These are SI standards as meters, kilograms, seconds, Kelvin, amperes, candelas, and moles. And those standards are based on a number of different things, particularly they're related by the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius at the original definition. Our derived units go from unit list, units list, distance, area, volume, mass, force, work, power, pressure, torque, density, and unit weight. And they're generally built, of course, we have to remember that we have time in here coming into all these. So if it gravity is unitless, it usually is the density of something over the density of water. The edges of that are 13.6, if you would, for mercury, and 0 .001294 for air, about but one for water, 2.67 for granite or aluminum, and 13.6 for mercury are good places to start. Angular displacement is in radians. It's unitless because it is the arc length over the length of the radius defining the arc. Two pi radians equals a revolution. There's the tie back there. Distance is in meters. Area is in square meters or distance squared. Volume is in cubic meters or distance cubed or area times distance which becomes distance cubed. Mass, back to our standard of kilograms, mass. Force is mass times acceleration. Mass times distance over time squared. Work is force times distance. It's actually force dot displacement which is a scalar quantity. That's so that's mass times distance squared over time squared. Power is that over time, so it's cubed. Pressure, the way we think about it now, is work over volume, so mass times distance squared divided by distance cubed is mass over time squared over distance. That one's probably going to be wrong, or that one's going to be right, time squared. Torque is going to be mass times distance squared over time squared. Density is mass over distance cubed, and unit weight is mass over time squared times distance squared. When you make the table yourself and build one thing upon the other, 
you will then at least understand what it means when we say all units can be built from these standards and it can be completely thrown off in the end if you learn originally which is has occurred over time for a number of different reasons that the SI standard is gram, the SI standard is kilogram, it is the mass defined by one, 10 centimeters of water by 10 centimeters of water by 10 centimeters of waters when water is at its densest which is at 4 degrees Celsius or about um, 277 0.15 Kelvin. Thanks for listening.